Hello, good day everyone. Well, as I prepare this devotional, the temperature is finally broken from our long heat wave. This morning, the air is finally cool. The heavy smoke has lifted and I can see blue sky. Hallelujah. Dare I say it, maybe this is a little preview of the fall mornings we can look forward to after a long Sacramento summer. I thank the Lord for these changes and how he blesses me, how he blesses us with the refreshment brought by these changes. At the same time, I see the toll this long heat wave has taken with dry, drooping landscaping, Folsom Lake getting lower and lower as it provides us with the water and the power that we need, the ongoing fire reports, and, and realizing the impact that hunkering down during this time has had on me mentally, physically, spiritually. Like many of us, I'm a creature of habit, and I find comfort, I find security in my pattern of life and my schedules. When my life's routines are changed, constrained or disrupted, I find that hunkering down is part of the process I use when I'm adapting to or coping with these changes. Enjoying this cool morning powerfully reminds me that one of the most insidious aspects of this hunkering down is a loss of perspective. It's almost like I have blinders on and my field of vision significantly narrows. Interestingly and most troubling, I find that increasingly my focus is on me. So why is it on this cool, beautiful morning my praise for God's blessings come easily and joyfully, but when I'm hunkering down, his blessings seem distant, distant, or even I don't recognize them. That's a question I'm sure we've all experienced. Maybe some of us are even grappling with right now. This question ties directly into the focus of today's devotional, to remember to count your blessings. So what does blessing mean? As I started this devotional, my focus was on the gifts I felt God was giving me beginning with this refreshingly cool morning. However, as I researched blessing, I found that while it's true God's blessings are gifts, they're much broader, evolving his favor upon those he blesses. I found this explanation from Baker's Evangelical Dictionary helpful. The terms for blessing in the New Testament are generally used to designate that one, someone, is favored by God. In Matthew 5, chapter 3, Jesus begins teaching the Beatitudes with, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. While I prepared this devotional, I shared the focus, Count Your Blessings, with several friends who pointed me to the song of the same name, Count Your Blessings, written by a Jonathan Oatman, Jr. in 1897. I'd like to share the refrain and several stanzas from this song. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So amid conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. This song frames very well, I think, why we need to regularly count our blessings from our Father in heaven. His love for us is evidenced by it shines through the gifts and favor he gives us. By naming his blessings to us, we acknowledge his love, his faithfulness, his authority. We are compelled to praise him and thank him for his love and provision. Through our praise, our hearts, our souls, our minds, our strength are open to him and his Holy Spirit who works in us and through us as we serve in the name of Jesus all for the glory of our Father in heaven. In researching the song, Count Your Blessings, I came upon a website named hymnal.net that contained many recent comments on the song and its impact it's had on the commentators' day, their attitude and faith. The people commenting are from around the world, are followers of Jesus, and testify to the power of remembering to count our blessings. I'd like to share several with you. We have Kwaku, who lives in Dubai, of the United Arab Emirates. Thank you, Lord, for of reminding me to count my blessings just when I was coming to you for a worry. And the assurance, you got me. Or Irene, who lives in Benin, 
Nigeria. When we focus so much on our struggles, it makes us ignorant of God's kindness and faithfulness. But when we focus on God's kindness and faithfulness, it makes us so ignorant of our struggles that things begin to fall into place. Or Nwoki from Logos, Nigeria. Hallelujah, God has always been ever faithful to us. Even in our unfaithfulness, he still showers us with his many blessings and love. And finally, Diamond, who lives in Moradabad, India. What a great hymn, bringing all before God, full of blessing, joy, and comfort. Lord, bless them all who sing this hymn and praise you. I encourage you to take time this week to count your blessings from our Father in heaven, thanking him and praising him for his steadfast love, his provision, and his protection. As Paul teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, excuse me, verses 16 through 18, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I will close with this prayer from Habo, who lives in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Help us, O Lord, to count our blessings. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you and your family.